as a Royal Irish veteran, um, I signed up a number of years ago in my youth to protect and defend the people of this country. Um, that doesn't change because I'm no longer a serving member. All the veterans are still uh, of one mind in that way. And I think I can speak for a lot of them in that we haven't gone away and we understand what's going on and we're not uh, going to leave you in the lurch, let's just say. We will always be there and we will always be here to defend the people of this country. That is from a threat from ab abroad and also from home enemies. I'm a, a father and a grandfather and I am damn sure I am not prepared to lie down and let the freedom that I had as a child and an adult be taken away for our children and our grandchildren. Get Starmer out! Get Starmer out! Get Starmer out! In that building right now, Keir Starmer is being asked questions that are presented to him days before and then his answers are scripted for him. So it's not like he's talking any sense in there today. It's going to be all bollocks anyway, like it usually is. That man is not our leader. And the reason we're here is to demonstrate that we still believe, as we have done since 2020 and probably before, that the people have more power than the people in power. And they want us to believe otherwise. And we refuse to let them lead us. We refuse to bow down to his dictatorship. He's doing the job of the World Economic Forum. We know where he wants to take us and we know he wants us divided. Together, united, we'll never be divided. Whatever your ideas and views are, we need to argue in the care that everybody has got to be able to come out and debate and thrash out ideas and issues and yeah, you've got to be able to be called names. It's not pleasant. I don't like it. No one likes it. But we can't imprison people or take them offline or suffocate their rights as a consequence of offence. We are collective citizens, right? So whether you think you're from the left, the centre, the right or completely independent, we have a duty and a responsibility, a moral and political responsibility from our forefathers that fought and died for free speech and our liberties and rights and for us to defend and uphold them together. As we stand outside this institution, right, and democracy and liberty and freedom and rights, and some people go, well, what is that now? What it is is, in some places, we always made the point, if we do something like this, they can come and take you away or come and knock on your door. Well, they're beginning to do that here. And we need to decide, are we going to go out and win our friends, our enemies, our colleagues, people that we work with, our neighbours, and get them involved with us and have difficult discussions and not call them names, but say, I disagree with the virtue of your argument. I think you should get involved with us because of this so that we can keep arguing and thrashing these things out and we can live freely. We've got to be able to freely disagree with one another. Storm is a traitor to the English working class all day and all night. I think, in fact, everything he's done so far, he's been voted in under false pretenses. He's lied, he's lied, he's lied, and it's going to get worse. In October, when the, when the budget comes, we're all going to suffer terribly. That's why I'm here, because I, I think he's a traitor. Absolutely right. A traitor to the whole world. And of course, the votes he got well, so-called landslide for Labour was less than the so-called landslide against Labour when my brother lost in 2019, and miles below oh, you, what um, he got in 2017. So, Starmer is here, yes, not representing the people of the United Kingdom. Exactly. He's here representing the Israel. He's here representing the World Economic Forum and all their tyrannies being imposed upon us. Uh, in 2010, I set a campaign up uh, to actually, because it's incredible, we're still the highest tax drivers in the world, and one of the biggest things, the theme of today, is freedom. And the biggest, uh, I suppose, 
um, a tribute to what we can do in terms of freedom is to drive. How many people drive here? Yes. How many people got a diesel? Yes. <laughs> How many got a petrol? Yes. Okay, who's got an EV? <laughs> okay, it's freedom of choice. But guess what? That lot over there, the new government, are going to try and stop this. They've already moved the 2035 ban of new diesel petrol car sales back to 2030. I'll give Sunak a bit of credit. He moved it from 20 to 2035. But it was Boris Johnson who brought it back from 2040 to 2030. Now, what is, is really frustrating for me is not only the freedom of speech and freedom of movement, is actually in seven weeks' time, we've got a budget. The first budget, and this is going to be really... Uh, the, I think the cliff edge point of this administration because I've seen credible information in the building behind me, in the Treasury uh, that we're going to get a 10p increase in fuel duty what that means is for everyone with an ordinary family car it's about 6 quid more to pay in the tank but let's get this in perspective you imagine a haulage company with about 50 trucks does about 7 miles to the gallon it will cost them £100,000 a year. That means they can't employ staff. They can't train staff and get this even more. They can't buy a clean kit. So this is the stupidity of that lot over there. They don't realise that putting more money in our pockets will make us freer and we spend more money and society gets better. It's common sense, isn't it? So from my point of view, I'd like to say thank you for coming here today. I'm frustrated as hell what's going on at the moment. I was... Uh, going to retire from Fairfall UK. We managed to stop £200 billion of tax uh, increases in the last 15 years. But what, it's all going to reverse on uh, October the 30th in the, in the budget. It's going to be painful. Guess who said that? Starmer. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be painful. Do you remember him? Yeah. Anyway, I honestly think, I've got a bet that, uh, of £50 with Bet Fred that this administration will be finished within three years. We love you, Donald. We do. Oh, Donald Trump, we love you.